Hello and welcome. What do you call a fish that only cares about itself? Shellfish. And speaking of shells, today we're going to learn how to find volumes of revolution using what's called the shell method. Let's get started. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a region in the XY plane. This region might look familiar. In fact, it's the same region we were playing around with in 6.2. It's the region between x squared and the square root of x from 0 to 1. On the left, we've got uh, the flat 2D version of the region. And on the right, we've got a more 3D perspective of that same region. Our goal here will be to find the volume of the solid generated by rotating the region about the y-axis. So we can uh, actually see the, what the solid would look like if we rotate this about the y-axis. Uh, here, I'm going to take that region and start rotating it around the y-axis. So you can see a little animation of this happening. And just to get a sense of what it's like, uh, let me just move it around a little bit. So it kind of has an empty inside. On the outside, it's like a little bowl, but a bowl that has uh, parts that go, that kind of spring out. Not a very practical bowl. <clears throat> In any case, <laughs> that's what you get when you take a leaf and you rotate it about an axis. At least that's what it kind of looks like. All right, so uh, that's what the actual solid looks like. So our goal is to find the volume of that solid. Now, uh, with the disk and washer kind of method, what we would do is we would make our rectangles perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So our rectangles would be horizontal. But here, we're going to make our uh, rectangles parallel to the axis of rotation, so our approximating rectangles. So let me show you what that would look like. So here are four approximating rectangles. I've basically taken the interval from x equals 0 to x equals 1, chopped it up into four subintervals, and created a rectangle for each of those uh, subintervals. Now, notice that the rectangles are perpendicular or parallel, sorry, to the axis of rotation. And that's the that's the key thing that distinguishes the shell method from the disk washer method is how those rectangles are uh, relative to the axis of rotation. So if they're parallel, that's shell. If they're perpendicular, that's the washer or uh, disk method. They kind of rhyme. We'll come, we'll remind you of that towards the end. All right, so here we have our parallel uh, rectangles. Let's see what would happen if we took uh, one of these rectangles and spun it about the y-axis. Uh, this is going to create some kind of approximating unit for the solid that we're interested in finding the volume of. Uh, let me make sure I can do this here. <laughs> Show uh, revolve shell. Here we go. OK. So we, we could pick any of these rectangles. I'm going to go ahead and pick the third one just because it's a little bit more illustrative of a typical uh, <coughs> approximating unit. So I'm going to take this and revolve it about. Try to see if you can imagine what that would look like first before we, before we rotate. All right, here we go. We're going to take that, rotate it about the y-axis, and here's what we get. Now we're going to call that a shell, or more specifically a cylindrical shell, because uh, it's kind of like a cylinder, right? It's like a cylinder, but it's got a hole in the middle of it. So it's only the, the shell, the outside part of the cylinder. So that's why we call this the shell method. Now each of these rectangles will have its own shell associated with it. So there's going to be one for this rectangle, there's one for the rectangle on the outside here, kind of a... Uh, <coughs> Uh, shorter shell, uh, but just the same width, right? The same, the width is the same for each of these rectangles. It's all delta x, uh, but then the height of each of these shells is depending on the distance between the two functions, the square root of x function on the top and the x squared function on the bottom. And so it depends where you are inside the region. Uh, let's see, let's go back over to the third one, and then here's what the second one looks like, and Here's what the first one looks like. The first one is right up against the axis of rotation, so there isn't really anything that opens up inside uh, of that cylindrical shell. So that one's actually 
a full-on cylinder, but um, that's only the first rectangle, and that's only if the uh, region touches the y-axis or touches the axis of rotation. So for the most part though, our formula will be the same for finding all of these uh, shells. Now all of these, we're going to have these shells, it's not just one at a time. So uh, let me show what all the shells look like together. Computer's thinking about it. There it goes. So here's what all the uh, shells look like together. And we can kind of think of this as a, like an onion. You know, if you take a, a slice of an onion out, uh, if you do it in the right way, <laughs> uh, you get these concentric circles or concentric uh, shells. So that's what we're looking at right here. Sometimes people liken this to those, uh, those Russian dolls that fit inside of each other. That's a way of thinking about it. So these ones, all of the shells perfectly fit inside of each other. And that's because all the rectangles that they came from are uh, right up next to each other. Okay. So uh, the idea is we're going to find a formula for the volumes of each of those shells, add them all up, and then take the limit as the number of shells goes to infinity. Now I would do that here, but I'm afraid my computer is not strong enough to handle <laughs> Uh, taking the number of rectangles and moving it <laughs> towards infinity. <laughs> In fact, I think it's totally frozen. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> let's turn to the notes and take a look to uh, see how we can come up with a formula for uh, the volumes of these shells. Okay, so here we are in the printed notes for 6.3. And you can see in figure 1, we've got a picture of what we were just looking at a second ago with one of the sample shells shown there. And our goal is going to be to figure out a formula for adding up all the volumes of each of these shells. Now, there are details that we're not going to go over here, and those details you can find in a textbook. Uh, but what we're going to do is uh, go for the more intuitive approach. And um, I'd encourage you to go check out the details about actually formally proving this. Uh, but just for time's sake, we're going to go with the intuitive approach here. The intuitive approach, is, uh, the intuitive approach is like this. If we take one of those shells and we cut it, so just cut it as if you were to cut some kind of um, shell, uh, <laughs> and you uh, open it up. So take it, you cut it, you open it up, <clears throat> open it up, like taking one of those, uh, those cardboard toilet paper rolls. <laughs> and you cut it and then you can unravel it and you lay it down flat you're going to get some kind of really thin box with a volume that we can find the volume will look something like this it's going to be whatever the height of the shell was will be the height of the box so that's going to be the distance between these two functions in uh, from figure one and then uh, the <clears throat> the thickness of the box is going to be delta x because that's the uh, the width of each of these rectangles that the box came from. And then this length of the box is going to be the circumference of the shell. So if you cut it and you unravel it, you're unraveling this circle right here. And so this circle, when you unravel it, becomes the length of this box. So whatever the circumference of that circle is, whatever the circumference of this shell is, that's going to be the length of the box. So that's going to be, uh, you can get using the formula for a circumference. It's going to be 2 pi times whatever the radius of the shell was. The radius of the shell, we're going to say in a moment, is going to be the distance from the axis of rotation, because that's where the center of the circles or the shells are, uh, out to wherever you are in the region. So whatever the x value is right here, for example or the y value if you're making your shells go the other direction. So the idea here though, uh, conceptually, is that we have a height of height, a length of 2 pi times the original radius of the shells, and then a width of delta x. So if you multiply all these together, you'll get the volume of one of these shells. These shells, as you use more and more of these rectangles to create these shells, the thinner and thinner they're going to become, because delta, delta x is going to shrink down to zero. And the sums of the volumes of these shells will approach 
this uh, the, the true volume of the solid, and that will those uh, finite sums will approach an integral in the limit. So we'll get the volume is the integral from a to b across your region that you subdivided. Uh, sorry, across your interval that you subdivided. And then we have the volume of each of those shells. So that will be 2 pi times the radius was one dimension, height was the other dimension, uh, was another dimension, and then dx was the last dimension. That was the delta x turned into a dx. So there's our formula for the shell method. That gives you the volume of the solid that's made by rotating this region about, uh, in this case, the y-axis. So in example one, uh, we'll show all the details to solving one of these shell problems using this formula. So example one looks at the region that we're playing around with. It's the one between the square root of x and x squared. In figure three, we've got that familiar leaf shape that is our region. And we're going to be rotating this about the y-axis. So rotating that region about the y-axis. And maybe I'll just highlight that. Remember, our key words are we're revolving about the y-axis. That tells you we're not going to be using some kind of um, other cross-sections or anything like that. In fact, the shell method is totally distinct from cross-sections, from using cross-sections. It's not going to be integrating the area of the cross-sections. Here, it's a totally different kind of unit of approximation. It's these shells, not washers or disks. Um, or other kinds of cross-sections like triangles or um, squares or things like that. That was all in 6.2. Here, our units of approximation are these shells, so we have a specific formula to go along with that then that we just uh, came up with the intuition for. Okay, so we're taking our uh, region, we're rotating it about the y-axis, and if we are going to use the shell method, we've got to make our rectangles parallel to the axis of rotation parallel to the axis of rotation. That's what's going to make those shells and therefore uh, have us make us use the shell method. What I'm going to do is just write, uh, draw a quick shadow version of the leaf on the other side of the y-axis. So if you take that region rotated 180 degrees, there's where it would be. And now we're going to take this infinitely thin rectangle, which we're just drawing as a segment here. You can use a rectangle to draw it if you like. Uh, with, with an actual little thickness or um, uh, width. But uh, here I'm just going to use a line, and that represents an infinitely thin rectangle. So if we take that and we revolve it around, then on the other side we're going to get something like a copy of it, and we can then draw our cylindrical shell. So it's going to look like this just the shell, just the outside curved part of the cylinder. Not even the top or the bottom, right? There's nothing on the top or the bottom. This is just mapping out the curved part of the cylinder with infinite thinness in the limit. So there's a picture of, uh, I should probably draw this little tick mark there. <laughs> uh, this particular rectangle, this infinitely thin rectangle, was at uh, a given x value of just x, somewhere inside of our interval from 0 to 1. And we're going to have shells for every x value between x equals 0 and x equals 1. This is just one of them. Now, we're going to need to know what the radius of that shell is. Oops. And what the height of that shell is. Those are the two things that we need to get in order to feed into our formula. Kind of like before in 6.2 we needed to find the inner radius and the outer radius so we could figure out the uh, the area of the washers. Same kind of thing here. Uh, we have these two things that we need to find. One is the radius of the shell. That's going to be this distance from the axis of rotation out to the um, out to the uh, rectangle. And by the way all of these are going to be in terms of x because we've subdivided x up. Right, we've taken the interval from x equals 0 to x equals 1 and chopped it up into a bunch of subintervals, creating a rectangle for each of those subintervals. So we're going to be integrating with respect to x. So we want our radius and our height in terms of x. Now the radius, the distance from the axis of rotation out to this rectangle in terms of x is just x. It's just going to be x. <laughs> 
say that a little strangely, but uh, so it, it's just going to be x, right? That's that horizontal distance from x equals 0, which is where the axis of rotation is, over to the rectangle whose x value is at x. Now the height of this rectangle is going to be the top y value minus the bottom y value. The height is a vertical distance. And so we're going to take the top y value, which is given by the square root of x, minus the bottom y value, which is given by x squared. So it's going to be the square root of x minus x squared. Let me just write that down. We're doing top minus bottom. And it looks like that 2 didn't come out. There. So that's all we need to fill into our uh, shell method volume formula. Now we're integrating from x equals 0 to x equals 1. We've got 2 pi times the radius. So this is 2 pi times the radius. Uh, let me just go up a little bit so you can remember what the formula looks like. So it's 2 pi times the radius. Remember that's the circumference, that's representing the circumference of the shell. And then times the height of the shell. And the height of the shell is the square root of x minus x squared. We figured that out down here. And then we've got a dx, and that's it. Great. So that's what the setup of our integral looks like. Let me just take a couple of steps to help get through our integral. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take this 2 pi out. Now, to integrate x times the square root of x minus x squared, what's the first step we're going to take? So if you said distribute the x, that would be a great first step. Now, when we do uh, x times the square root of x, the square root of x, remember, is x to the half, so we have an exponent of 1 plus a half, which gives us 3 halves. Then x times x squared gives you x cubed. And this was a great first step because now we no longer have multiplication. We've got subtraction here as uh, the thing that's going to separate these terms. We can now integrate each of these terms separately because we've got this term minus this term inside of our integral. Before, we had 2, uh, two pi x times all this stuff inside of our integral. So we had times as sort of the last operation if you were going to do um, PEMDAS here. But here, subtraction is the last thing that's done. So we've got our terms uh, successfully broken up so we can integrate them term by term. And what I'll do is say, um, well, we can just take this all the way through. So we'll go uh, add 1 to the exponent. That's going to be 5 halves. And then divide by that exponent, which is like multiplying by the reciprocal. Then we've got x to the fourth over 4 from 0 to 1. So this is 2 pi, and then when we plug in the 1, we get 2 fifths minus 1 fourth. Um, and then if you plug in the 0, all these become 0, so we don't have to write that. So if you work it out, you get 3 pi over 10. 3 pi over 10, so that's the volume. If we took this region, rotated it about the y-axis. Great, so there's example 1. Uh, in the next part, we'll check out example 2. Thanks for watching.